Our guest in this first segment is the sheriff of Berkeley County, Nate Harmon. Nate, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. I appreciate the invite. Yeah. What uh, Have you ever bought a lottery ticket? Uh, you know, when my wife uh, said to, I just don't generally uh, gamble in that way. But, uh, you know, every once in a while she dabbles into it. Mm-hmm. I don't. I got close on this last one. I got I got the mega ball on two numbers, which I, I told Bill was worth ten bucks. Bill claimed a dollar of that for himself. I still owe you a dollar. You do, you do. And I, Rob, and I have not forgotten. I just I have to break a five. I've got to break a five. <laughs> and uh, I don't have change. <laughs> nobody, nobody has ones anymore or actually coin change. Uh, Nate, let's talk about the Berkeley County Public Nuisance Ordinance that got so much attention on our show on Friday. You actually texted me. Uh, in regards to what the difference uh, is between the the rumor versus the reality of of this ordinance, can you talk about this a little bit? Yeah, uh, you know, um, I was very adamant and open uh, when uh, in my campaign and since being in office that um, there was uh, uh, a need to address uh, trap houses, drug houses, and. Uh, we'd like to look at and uh, try to formulate something close to what City PD had in terms of their drug house ordinance. Now, t- in speaking with, with, with Chief Swartwood and whatnot, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, bumps in the road, so to speak. They've done a lot of polishing and amending and, and different things to tweak that. And, of course, uh, yeah, we saw it. And when I say we, I mean there's a, a few council members and myself and um, uh, litter control, uh, Clint Hogman, and um, some others that really thought that this would be a good idea to at least let's draft something and let's learn from the past uh, what city has done and let's create a draft and we create that draft. Let's try the original thought was to try to make this thing a one stop shop uh, in terms of uh, a citizen being able to click one button on the, the website and be able to see all three uh, portions of this ordinance. We thought mm-hmm. that to be simpler, uh, you know, but in, in hindsight, uh, we realized that uh, as an eight-page document, even to the most layman's person, it can get a lot confusing uh, with so much information. Um, you know, we, we looked at uh, social media, and, of course, uh, social media is its own animal. Uh, things can grow legs, and Facebook court tends to convict before – um, you know, getting faxed and uh, people buy into various ideas and concepts. And, uh, you know, it steals away from the spirit of the effort. And uh, there were some good things that was said about the uh, ordinance draft, uh, but there were some bad things too. Uh, I, I stand firm against anyone that says that this is a, a constitutional violation. I mean, you heard pretty radical things being said uh, for, for, uh, on this ordinance uh, so much as uh, the, the, the author who even drafted this should resign their job immediately. Mm-hmm. The, uh, uh, you know, they're going to kick your door in and, and come in and arrest you. Um, if your grass is 10 inches tall and not eight, you're going to get arrested. I mean, there was so such, I would say, slanderous type of comments made. And, you know, that's just that's fueling a fire, mm-hmm. right? It's fueling a fire. It's unnecessary. It's unappreciated. And uh, I had the uh, privilege of, uh, of attending Delegate Horse um, uh, Town Hall when he was speaking on events and stuff. It wasn't my town hall, so by no means – was uh, was I speaking on anything specific? But I was asked uh, about this ordinance at one point, and you know, I walk away with such a deep appreciation with town halls, and uh, I feel we need to take a different approach. So we all collectively agreed that we've seen enough information come through uh, on the introduction of this draft, uh, because January 26 was set up for the people, right? This I can assure you that this will not get my stamp approval until pe- the people are involved mm-hmm. and the people agree with this. And I, I say that wholeheartedly. I consider myself a constitutional sheriff. And when you look at this, that public hearing was meant to have our citizens stand there and, and give us their input. 
right? You know, you, you tell us what the issue is or what issue you have with it. Give us ideas, right? That's the whole idea of that public hearing. And it was going to happen at 11 that day and I believe 6 that evening. But there was this, so much of this, you know, uh, fire going early with with this. And we and it, it was just part of it was just unnecessary. And we believe we received some input on it. And as I got to, uh, you know, reevaluate the ordinance, um, I, you know, keeping an open mind, realized that it was just too much. We need to separate them and we need to have t- town halls individually on all of them. Mm-hmm. At some point, we need to invite the people in and we need to have several. And um, I, 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 th- I think my uh, constituent, my, my the fellow councilman agreed with that. Uh, our legal department agreed with that, and that's why we canceled it. Was this ordinance similar to the one the city of Martinsburg already has in place, Nate? It wasn't a mirror copy, no, no. Um, coming into office, um, it, if you... There's a lot of, that you have to do to utilize the resources within the county uh, government, within the Dunn building. Um, and we've experienced these trap houses, these drug houses. And so I went to planning authority, uh, planning and development authority. I, I went to code enforcement and I said, can you come with me? Or they would ask the same, can you come with us? Because this appears to be uh, you know, sneaking onto something criminal. And uh, I said, sure. So, you know, with working with other departments in the county, I was like, there's there's let's let's make this a a, a cleaner uh, way by establishing this, because countless calls have come to me in terms of my neighbor is selling this uh, or or, or taking buckets of fecal matter outside and dumping it uh, behind uh, their property along my property line. Uh, There's countless activity throughout all hours of the night i've got atvs and 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 race uh, you know uh razors racing in a field creating dust clouds on weekends and and uh, you know this is across the road from uh, what used to be a tranquil very calm uh environment for retirees and mm-hmm. you know come to find out they don't have the business license they're not doing the proper things but here's the deal you don't throw them under a gauntlet. There's a process. If someone is found to be in violation, there is a very, very good and thorough process to deal with that. Uh, we don't kick down doors and slap cuffs on people because the grass is 10 inches tall. Uh, you know, we're not uh, doing anything different than what's already what already exists but making it better for the citizen the next door neighbor to say if there is two or more instances of the similar fashion Mm -hmm. let's call it drugs and that individual has been put on notice or the landlord has been put on notice and they turned an obvious blind eye through investigation and through the warnings and, and a progress plan they negated all of it then there's other steps to move forward. But at least the citizen now has teeth on a civil suit against that person. And and that's the spirit behind this ordinance is how can we equip our citizens with a lot more tools, with some more tools than what they have? Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See if I can unpack this a little bit, uh, Sheriff. Uh, the ordinance, as I understand, first, the ordinance are, is – drafted and enacted by the county council uh you as the sheriff are not involved at all with the exception of making of making input uh and uh, so it's when you say we it's basically the county council that makes these decisions it's my understanding with this particular ordinance it was very directed initially based upon complaints which you have you received and also that you've experienced there was at least one uh uh, lounge or bar in the county uh, that that did not sell liquor. They serve liquors at BY, BYO, uh, bring your own bottle. And as a consequence, they were able to get around the ABC regulations, which is the teeth of enforcing much, much of our uh, liquor ordinances mm-hmm. in the state. So they were able to get around the ABC, uh, and they were, it was a 
site that you were called on quite frequently, even though they were only open a couple of days a week, you're still called there quite frequently. Uh, they stayed open until 6 o'clock, uh, whereas most of the bars have to close at 2. So there was a lot of, a lot of disturbance of this one place. So the ordinance was designed to address that one problem, uh, that one problem uh, specifically. Uh, as it went through various rewrites, uh, it became people uh, added to it, and it became kind of a hodgepodge of, of a Christmas tree, if you will, with a lot of different ornaments mm -hmm. that far in excess of what was initially proposed. Uh, the county council realized it had grown way out of proportion what they wanted, what they needed. So the county council on the own volition, probably with input, probably reading social media and others, realized they wanted to back out. So they have, right now, they have no intention of of executing or um, uh, formalizing this ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you mentioned social media. Uh, one of the advantages uh, that I have is that I do not get on social media. I think <laughs> everything you described is probably exact. That's definitely not a bad thing, Bill. <laughs> That's right. That's Pro <laughs> everything you've described is probably true, very exact. Uh, I can only experience it through someone like yours mm -hmm. I. So, But anyway, that was my sense of the ordinance, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, uh, and I want to come back to the, my initial point. Uh, even though you, as one of the other... Uh, elected officials in the county, being the uh, the county clerk, the circuit clerk, uh, uh, and the others, uh, you you work very closely with the county council. You make input, but they're the ones that are charged with responsibility of preparing and executing the ordinance. Yeah, I, I think I have, I hold a personal responsibility yeah. to at least echo the citizens' yes. complaints yes. that I've heard. Uh, and I provide that input, and I'm more than welcome to provide that input at any time. As we got to, to looking at these nuisance, uh, the, these ordinances collectively, there's there's gaps. Yeah. If if you know, uh, Mr. Bill, the lawless rogue violator, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, did which some, I am. Which <laughs> I, so if, if you if you violated the noise ordinance, I'd give you a warning, and then. But 24 hours later, yeah. if you did it again, as long as it wasn't within the 24 hours, 24 hours later, next weekend, you did it again, i got to give you another warning. Yeah. And then so, you know, that's all we're able to do. And the, the, cry, the, the crying outpour of the citizens to we need to do more is, is what helped drive this idea. Not to mention the fact that I've been very open about doing something yeah. with uh, uh, our trap houses and stuff. Yes, because I, I will mention this. There, you mentioned a business, I'm gonna mention a residence. This residence up north was so brazen that it actually had signage inside their house like a grocery store. No fronts, no bumps, no dime bags. This person was actually letting uh, known drug dealers use their home to sell dope out of, and 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 it, you know, some communities are scared because they don't want to say anything uh, because they're in fear of retaliation. But you know, when it comes to class action suits and, and whatnot, if we can come together as a people and be able to take care of this issue together, that's again a, a, another example of why we're trying to do this. And at the end of the day, if the people don't like it. Uh, you know, we do all the town halls, and the people don't like it. The people don't like it. Right. Uh, they're not going to be force-fed this. I can assure you that. Yeah, uh, it's a. It's not a simple, trivial task to develop an ordinance uh, for something like noise or for mm -hmm. public nuisance, because what is viewed in one person's eye mm -hmm. as a nuisance is purely acceptable in someone else's eyes. We tried to put a dog ordinance in a few years ago, a noise ordinance. Uh, one was with the, uh, uh, with a dirt track that was uh, proposed in the uh, western part of the county. Uh, it was a hornet's nest trying to jump in here because every time you think you're trying to um, meet middle ground, fair ground, you found out you were not. There was a large group said you did not go far enough. Another group said you went too far. You're invading my, uh, my liberties, my privacy. Uh, it takes the wisdom of Solomon to sort through this. And I doubt if very many of, of, very many of these ordinances are as successful as what we would like for them to be. Mm -hmm. 
Nate, uh, we are talking with Sheriff Nate Harmon here on the program this morning. Uh, the the example you gave for Bill in regards to a person who was inviting people to sell drugs in their home already. Mm-hmm. If, if I'm in that neighborhood and I call you and I say, Sheriff Harmon, I've seen drug dealers going into this house. I mean, I, I know what's going on in there. Can't you come to the home and do something about it? Aren't there laws on the books that already permit you to do that? Uh, there are, and that's the you know one of the job tasks of the ACE team, and they are they've gotten really really good at substantiating and cooperating those kind of claims. Mm-hmm. Um, this particular residence that I'm talking about, though, you go through this process, they get arrested, they go through the criminal process. Two weeks after getting bonded out, they're doing it again. And so, um, even though on the criminal side there we have the ability to address it, there are problems with, you know, you know, bonds, you know, uh, for for uh, for someone that that are doing that is doing these kind of things in terms of either being too low or uh, um, either or personal recognizance bond. What I'm talking about is what does the individual citizen have at their uh, in their toolbox to be able to do something about it. If, if they currently possess the power to file a suit, which they may, um, I'm not aware of that process and we wanted to make sure it was very clean and, uh, and, and available to the citizens as it pertains to this county because of our growth and everything that's going on. It's, you know, it's, you've got to understand when you're growing by 3000 every year and projected to do so for the next five years, we can't do this alone. We, you know, we've got to evolve. We've got to evaluate, re- reassess, and if we can start cleaning these things up and working together as a community to be able to address these problems, I think you know it's it's it's, it's the way I look at it. It's a it's a neighborhood watch, so to speak. I mean, you know, they're they're someone would be hesitant or let's say more hesitant than to allow their residents to be utilized like that. Mm-hmm. Landlords that uh, could care less about hiring a property manager, but they have 100 to 200 properties. Uh, all they're worried about is the paycheck at the end of the month. And uh, you got folks selling drugs out of those rentals. And I could it could be the single mom with an infant child that's in the bottom floor and they're making meth in the top floor. And because there's no uh, vetting process or, or, or let's say, um, you know, I could care less mentality by those that own those properties uh, and just worry about the money, you know, now that single mother uh, has the ability to be able to do something about it. And it's, it can be clearly defined, too. There was an objection raised Friday because the word uh, moral appeared in the ordinance somewhere, moral or morals or immoral. Can you comment on that? Word specifically, was that a word you requested to be in there? Was was it for, done for other reasons? I I, uh, I can't, I don't want to, no, I, I can't comment on that because I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, the word moral, while it was put in there, uh, I know our legal helped us draft this. Uh, my uh, concern was more in terms of what's unreasonable interference. And, and and I did. I think I heard what the definite. You know, what is that? What does that mean? And um, it's pretty much just acts that significantly and negatively interfere and impact uh, public health, um, the uh, safety and peace and comfort or convenience of another. And um, you know, when you're when you're maliciously and negligently doing acts like again, carrying your own fecal matter out in buckets and dumping it on another neighbor's yard. Um, and, and there's disease and, and whatnot going on. Um, I had a residence that was actually running a dump business, never licensed, going out of state, picking up other people's trash, dumping it on their property. It was overspilling. Not only, not only could you see several piles, when I say piles, I'm talking higher than me, uh, in their yard, but it was overspilling over their privacy fence, and there was a stream just I don't know, probably 60 yards from it. We brought EPA in. Um, uh, we, we, we tried to utilize every asset that we can, and it took a while, but we took care of it. Um, and all these experiences that we've, we've, we've uh, been, uh, that's been brought to our attention, that we've experienced, this cleans all that up and puts it in one nice little neat package.
You're talking about the ordinance now? Yes. Okay. Uh, you mentioned several times, and one of the things that you get a lot of credit for, Sheriff, and I think deservingly so, is you try to develop partnerships with the community. And uh, you have you carry this to new heights, so I applaud you for that. But what mechanisms do we have for the residents to become fully partner with you and the other county officials? We have social media, we have town halls. Are there other vehicles that you would recommend? I think literature, potential mailings, um, um, I think on our websites we need to be we need to advocate messaging more in terms of this uh, and I think it needs to be simplified I don't think you need to throw up an eight-page document I think you need to break it down and that's what I plan on doing with these town halls and however many town halls it takes um, uh, you know to to gather and garner the input that that satisfies the people uh, I, there's nothing that replaces the in-person conversation that one can have. I mean, literally 80% of communication is done non-verbally anyway, and I appreciate that. And I want to see people face-to-face, -face, and I want to hear their issues. And uh, hands down, town halls first. Social media, our websites, literature mailings. Uh, I can't think of any others other than community events and being able to spread the word. Nate, thanks so much for your time this morning. As always, appreciate it, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sheriff Nate Harmon, our guest on the program.